Oh, sorry there, just uh, stretching out my facial muscles so I don't pull a muscle during this video. Which isn't about facial muscles, but it is about muscles. We have over 600 muscles in the body. In this video, we're going to look at 15 of those. 15 common superficial muscles that control the movement of different joints, like our elbow and shoulder joint. We're going to look at these muscles in terms of antagonist pairs. How pairs of muscles working against each other help us control each of the joints in our body. We'll learn some movement terms, such as flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, rotation. We'll learn some origins and insertions, basically the points where the muscles attach to bones that they're moving. And we'll learn the difference between isometric and isotonic contractions. So we're only learning a small fraction, 15 out of the over 600 muscles, but we're going to learn a lot of concepts that go with these as we go through all of these 15. So let's jump to the whiteboard and get started. All right, before we get into the muscles themselves, there's several terms that we need to learn. We'll start with some movement terms. The first one is flexion. Now flexion is any time you're taking a joint and you're decreasing the angle of it. So for example, whenever you contract the bicep muscle and that bends the elbow, that would be an example of flexion. If you do the opposite movement and you extend the elbow, or increase the angle of that joint, then we call that extension. So flexion and extension are opposites of each other. Flexion is whenever you decrease the angle of a joint. Extension is whenever you increase the angle of that joint. And they're kind of opposite movements for most of our joints. And this idea of opposite movements gets into one of the big ideas of this video, which is antagonist pairs. In that example of bending and extending the elbow joint, we have an antagonistic pair of muscles. The biceps will flex the joint or decrease the angle. The triceps have to do the opposite movement and extend the elbow joint. If your bicep is contracting, then your tricep is relaxing and vice versa. And so we call those an antagonist pair. It allows the joint to move one way and then back the other way and it's controlled by two different muscles. These two diagrams demonstrate those terms. If you have extension, you're gonna increase the angle between the humerus bone here and the radius and the ulna by moving the arm down this way. But if you flex that elbow joint, you're going to decrease the angle by moving your radius and ulna, or your lower arm, up this way, and therefore decreasing that angle between those bones. So those are flexion and extension, but we have other motions that our joints can do as well. One of those is rotation. Rotation is just going to be turning a joint, and usually when we talk about rotation, we need to indicate a direction, such as I'm going to rotate my shoulders medially, or I'm going to rotate my shoulders laterally. So we usually pair the word rotation with a directional term to indicate which direction we're rotating that joint. Next we have the terms abduction. Abduction is movement away from the midline. So to abduct my arm, I'm going to take my arm and move it away from my midline. I think of this like being abducted by aliens, like you're getting taken away from something. It's taken away from the midline. And the opposite of that is a very similar sounding word, adduction. And I just think of addition. I'm adding it back to my torso. So when I adduct my arm, I return it back to my side or back to the midline. So I abduct the arm, but I can also adduct the arm. So even though those terms are pretty similar, I think there's a good way to remember them. Abduct and adduct. Those aren't all the movement terms, but those will be the main five that we'll use in the muscles that we're looking at in this video. Now, all muscles in your body connect to at least two points. Usually those are bones. And in all the examples we look at here, these muscles will connect to different bones in the body to pull on them and cause us to move. The two bones that the muscles connect to have names. We have the origin, and this is going to be whatever bone the muscle attaches to that doesn't move. The opposite of that is the insertion. The insertion is going to be the bone that does move. So if I think of bending my elbow as an example, my bicep the biceps brachii muscle connects from my scapula up here down to my radius down here. And whenever that contracts, it's going to move the radius. The radius is the bone that actually moves, so that would be the insertion. The origin is going to be the bone that doesn't move, and that was the scapula. Whenever I bend my elbow, my scapula isn't really moving right here. My radius is, therefore my scapula is the origin and my radius is the insertion. Whenever I'm trying to identify origins and insertions, I find it helpful to identify the insertion first because it's easiest to tell what's moving and then to go back and say, okay, what would the origin be that this could be pulling on to cause that movement to happen? So origin doesn't move, insertion does move. Finally, there's two types of contractions that we're gonna look at. Those are isometric and isotonic. That prefix iso just means same. So let's look at isometric first. Iso means same, metric means length. So isometric means same length. And this is whenever you're contracting a muscle but no movement happens. So for example, if I try to lift up on my desk right now, I promise you this muscle is contracting right now, but nothing's happening. There's no movement happening, right? So that would be an isometric contraction. I'm straining really hard, but there's no movement happening. So it's isometric, same length, or in other words, no movement. The opposite type of contraction is isotonic, and we're going to look at more isotonic contractions throughout this video. Isotonic means the same force, 
and this is going to be when there is movement happening. So for example, if I'm lifting up this book and I can track my bicep to do that, I'm applying the same force onto this book as I lift it up. Now, if this book were really heavy and I tried to lift it and there was no movement happening, well, then I would be changing the amount of force that I'm trying to push up with. But if there is movement happening, that's happening with about the same force the whole length of the contraction. So we call it isotonic or same force. The main thing to remember, though, is that isotonic contractions are with movement. Isometric contractions are with no movement. So with all that terminology out of the way, let's actually look at some muscles. Whoa, this person looks intense. Muscle diagrams always look super intimidating, am I right? We'll move from the arms to the shoulder to the torso and then down to the legs. So we'll start off with this. This is the biceps brachii muscle. The action of the biceps brachii is to flex the elbow. And we've seen that in an example already. The origin of the biceps brachii is up in the scapula and the insertion is gonna be the radius. So it's gonna pull between the scapula and the radius in order to flex the elbow joint. Now its antagonist is the triceps brachii. The action of the triceps brachii is to extend the elbow joint or to straighten it back out. The triceps brachii originates at the proximal end of the humerus and it attaches to the proximal end of the ulna and it's gonna pull on that ulna to straighten the elbow out or extend the elbow. So biceps brachii, triceps brachii. Up next we have the deltoids and the deltoids are your shoulder muscles and their purpose is going to be to take your arms and raise them. Now raising your arms like that is an example of abduction. So abducting the arms is the function of the deltoids. The deltoids originate in the clavicle and the sternum and they insert to the humerus. So they're going to pull like this to lift up the arm. Now the antagonist of the deltoid is actually two different muscles, which we'll look at now. First we have the pectoralis major muscle. The pectoralis is gonna rotate your shoulders anteriorly. So whenever you contract these muscles right here, it pulls your shoulders forward. An example of a workout you could do here is a pec fly on a machine, or it could be a bench press, and you're rotating your shoulders forward whenever you push the weights out. So the pectoralis major rotates the shoulders anteriorly. The antagonist of the pectoralis major is the latissimus dorsi muscle. The latissimus dorsi is found in your lower back on both sides. Its origin is actually your lumbar spine down here, as well as your ribs, and it's gonna connect to the humerus up here in the arm. And what it does is it's gonna pull on that humerus back. So it acts as an antagonist to the pectoralis major. Pectoralis major rotates your shoulder forward. Latissimus dorsi rotates your shoulder backwards and sort of down. Or you could say it rotates it posteriorly. Now both of those muscles pull your shoulders down a little bit, either down and forward or down and back. So together they work as the antagonist to the deltoids, which abduct the arm. So deltoids can abduct the arm. Pectoralis major and latissimus dorsi together adduct the arm, bring it back down to the midline. Now another important muscle to the shoulders is the trapezius muscle. The trapezius muscle is kind of in the neck and the shoulders back in this region right here. Its origin is the thoracic and cervical spine as well as the base of the skull. And its insertion is the clavicle and the scapula. And the trapezius is all about moving your scapula. So if you move your scapula, which is back here, around like this, you're using your trapezius in order to do that. Okay, that feels good. I need to stretch out my trapezius a little bit. All right, from there, let's move down to the abdominal muscles. We have the rectus abdominis muscle, and that's gonna be, when you think of abs, you're thinking of the rectus abdominis. This is your six pack, your eight pack, your 10 pack, your 12 pack, bro. The movement of the rectus abdominis is gonna be to bend the spine, actually. Think about doing a sit up and your, and your spine sort of bends. That's the action of the rectus abdominis, and that's why doing an ungodly amount of sit ups could potentially maybe give you that six pack abs that you're hoping for. It connects from the anterior part of the pelvis right here, to the costal cartilage of the ribs right here and pulls those together, which is how it bends the spine. So rectus abdominis, flexion of the spine or bending of the spine. Laterally to the rectus abdominis are the external abdominal obliques. They're called obliques because they're not parallel or vertical like this, they kind of run in diagonal, so we call those obliques. And the external abdominal obliques do very similarly, but they can also contract either one at a time, which can bend you down like this. So it's kind of like doing a sit up, but kind of to the side. They have similar origin insertions, which are the pelvis and the ribs. So we've looked at muscles that control the elbow joint, the shoulder joint, the spine. Now let's look at the hip joint. The two prime movers here are the gluteus maximus. The gluteus maximus extends the hip joint or straightens the hip joint out. It originates on the pelvis and inserts on the femur. So it's gonna bend that femur back or bend it posteriorly. Now the antagonist of the gluteus maximus, we don't see in our diagram because it's an internal muscle. That muscle is called the iliopsoas. It's the antagonist of the gluteus maximus. Whereas the gluteus maximus extends the hip joint, this is gonna flex the hip joint. And here's a picture of that muscle so you can see a little bit what it looks like. So gluteus maximus extends the hip joint, iliopsoas 
flexes the hip joint. Now we'll look at muscles that control knee movement. The first one we have is the biceps femoris, not to get confused with the biceps brachii. Your biceps femoris are also called the hamstrings. So these are your back leg muscles and their job is going to be to flex the knee joint. The biceps femoris or hamstrings are going to originate in the pelvis and the femur and their insertion or the movement part is the tibia and the fibula. So they're going to pull on the tibia and the fibula to cause those to move or to flex the knee, to bend the knee. Bend the knee. Game of Thrones reference? Probably not. I'll edit that out. The antagonists of the hamstrings or biceps femoris are the quadriceps. Now the quadriceps are really four muscles. We have the rectus femoris right here, the vastus lateralis down here, the vastus medialis, and between those, deep or underneath all of this is the vastus intermedius. Those four muscles make up the quadriceps or your quads. The quads are in charge of extension of the knee or straightening your knee joint back out. And their origin includes the pelvis and the femur, and their insertion is gonna be the patella and the tibia. So they're gonna pull up on that kneecap and the tibia whenever you straighten out the leg. Now we've got another muscle here that maybe doesn't belong on this list, but I think it's a cool muscle, and that's called the sartorius. The sartorius is actually the longest muscle in the body, and it's gonna connect from the lateral part of the pelvis right here down to the medial part of the tibia. And I always think of this as the stinky leg muscle. If you do the stinky leg, you gotta use your sartorius. Do the stinky leg, do the, do the stinky leg. Is that how it goes? I don't know music. So the sartorius will rotate the knee laterally. If you sit cross-legged, you have to use your sartorius to sit that way. It's a way to get your knees to the side. Last but not least, let's take a look at two muscles that control the ankle joint. The first one is the gastronemius, and that prefix gastro means stomach, and it has nothing to do with your stomach except for the fact that whoever discovered this muscle said, hey, this looks kind of like the shape of the stomach, and now we'll call it gastronemius forever. The gastronemius connects from the femur right here down to the calcaneus in the heel. It's going to pull the heel up which will extend the ankle. Now technically we call this plantar flexion of the ankle because it moves the foot in the plantar direction, which is the downward direction or towards the, the base of the foot. But I also like to think about it as extending or increasing the angle of the ankle joint. Its antagonist is the tibialis anterior, which is named because it's um, connected to the tibia and it's on the anterior side. The tibialis anterior connects the tibia up here to the tarsal bones down here, and that's gonna pull your foot upward. I think about this as flexion of the ankle, but to be technically accurate, we need to call this dorsiflexion because it's flexing the ankle toward the dorsal side or the top side of the foot. So the gastronemius does plantar flexion of the ankle joint, and the tibialis anterior does dorsiflexion of the ankle joint. Woo, this has been a lot. Let's recap all of these muscles, but not worry too much about the origins and insertions and just focus on where is the muscle and what is its movement. We have the biceps brachii, which are gonna flex the elbow joint. We have the triceps brachii, which will extend the elbow joint. We have the deltoids, which will abduct the arm or move the arm away from the midline or raise the arm. We have the pectoralis major, which will rotate the shoulders anterior and the latissimus dorsi, which will rotate the shoulders posterior and a little bit down. We have the trapezius, which will move the scapula up and down and rotate the scapula and all that. We have the rectus abdominis, which will bend the spine like doing a crunch or a sit up. And we have the external abdominal obliques, which do the same thing, but it'll help you bend down to one side or the other. We have the gluteus maximus, which will extend the hip joint or move your leg backward or posterior. And the antagonist of the gluteus maximus is the iliopsoas muscle. It's an internal muscle that's gonna be a hip flexor that flexes or bends the hip muscle. Like whenever you kick a ball, you're using your iliopsoas muscle. Controlling the knee joint, we have the biceps femoris, which will flex or bend the knee. And we have the quadriceps muscle, which will extend or straighten out the knee. We have the sartorius or the stinky leg muscle, which rotates the knee to the side or laterally. We have the gastronemius, which is gonna bend your foot down or plantar flexion of the foot. And we have the tibialis anterior, which will raise the foot or dorsiflexion of the foot. All right, here's a blank diagram now. Take a moment, pause the video, see if you can identify all of these 15 muscles as well as the action of each muscle. What movement does it cause? All right, here are those muscles again, so you can check and see how many you got right. <laughs> this is gonna be the end of the video. <laughs> Thanks for all your hugs.